man who thought that one day he would be a dentist is now the new chaplain at Sacred Heart University. We have an exclusive look on how he got to be where he is today. A graduate student faces a life-changing injury but proves that nothing is impossible. We'll tell you how this cheerleader turned bodybuilder is making a name for herself. All of that and much more right now on The Pulse. Hello, I'm Adriana Walsh. And I'm Emily Archacki. Thanks for joining us. Between 4 and 20% of college athletes will sustain a concussion during any given season. We begin tonight with how the athletic training department at Sacred Heart University is using technology to detect traumatic brain activity. We go to Amanda Siliano for the story. Dizziness, fatigue, confusion, memory loss. These are just a few of the many symptoms college athletes receive after a concussive traumatic brain injury. A college athlete's goal is to give it their all, no matter the circumstance. Here at Sacred Heart University, the athletic training department is conducting a study on the lacrosse team to gain more knowledge on these sports-related head injuries. All your helmets! I need all your helmets! Every Thursday, players leave their helmets with Professor Teresa Miyashita, Program Director for the Athletic Training Department. So the purpose of the study is that we are going to monitor impacts on our lacrosse players throughout the season via these accelerometer sensors. The accelerometer sensor is inside of the helmets and so it's going to measure the amount and quality of impact that all the lacrosse players will receive from any impact they sustain, whether it be from practices or games, and then we're going to correlate that data to computer-based neurocognitive testings, um, SCAT-3 assessments, IQ assessments, depression, anxiety screens, drug and alcohol dependency screens, and previous medical histories as well. We're missing helmets. The athletic training students plug in the helmets to charge and then help Teresa log the data into the computer. We're charging the entire team today because they leave for an away game this weekend. And then when the sensors are all charged, then we'll upload the data. Into our computer. The sensor will actually just detect linear G's, it'll give us a HIC score, rotational degrees per second. Um, what we actually did then is in the beginning of January is when we baseline tested them on the other variables. And so we'll have scores from all those variables, we'll correlate that information to the impacts and we'll post test all of the guys. The sensor provides Teresa with important data. We get the exact location of where the player was hit, and then it also gives us this HIC score, which is head impact criteria. And so a HIC score is basically a measurement of not only the linear impact, so that G number, but how long of a duration that impact was sustained for. It's going really well. Good. Getting some really good data from your boys. If players have any questions or concerns about their recent concussions, this computer data program allows the athletic training department to explain and analyze what went on. This is the number we discussed before, yeah. and we see this number now. That was the first one. And then you sustain a second one, albeit slightly less G's, slightly less pick score. Let's bring you with the number. Oh, no. It's pretty uh, interesting to see the data and like hear about the data after practice and stuff like that. It's going to be interesting for like us freshmen because it's going to be four years, so it's going to be interesting to see like at the end of our four years how it all turns out. As the lacrosse team ends their season, additional studies on female athletes has begun. We're definitely open testing other teams. Ice hockey is another population that I would really like to start investigating. Because again, not a whole lot's been done on ice hockey, especially female ice hockey. And so if we can then start to tap in the populations that we have here at Sacred Heart, that would be very advantageous to our research. Current research has shown that there's no piece of protective equipment to prevent a concussion. Helmet manufacturers are interested in the study at Sacred Heart. They hope to use these results to better their equipment and to decrease the severity of the injuries. This is Amanda Saliano reporting for The Pulse. Back to you in the studio. Thank you for that report, Amanda. Several students from the class of 2018 got a little taste of what the Media Studies program at Sacred Heart has to offer through the pre-fall program. Let's take a look at what they had to say about it. fall program because I wanted to make friends and be able to get on campus before and I was also really interested in media studies which I'm currently majoring in 
So um, I really wanted to be able to learn more about what the whole major would entail. I think my favorite part was when we went to the movie picture museum. I just thought it was really cool to see like the history of animation and how everything was done. And we were able to go and like pick apart a, like a specific scene of the Titanic and see like all the different soundtracks that like went in to form that like 30 second scene. So I thought that was really interesting. I learned a lot about video editing and like how the whole production process worked. And I learned a lot about college too and through the whole movement process and made a bunch of friends. I learned that there are multiple fields of communications that you can get into and um, it's not just the sports media and the news stuff like that, it's all over behind the scenes. We had a tour of the Dan Patrick studio and that was pretty cool because I'm interested in sports media so it was nice to look around and see what cool stuff he had there. Um, we also went to the Maury show and we went to uh, the night show with uh, David Lennon. I've been really interested in communications throughout my high school career, so I saw this was uh, an awesome opportunity. We did some cool things and I wanted to take advantage of it. When we come back, we'll take a look at how a cheerleader's shattered dreams turned into a rewarding second chance. Stay tuned. Welcome back. After a serious injury that left Sacred Heart student Ashley Lockerbie unable to continue competitive cheerleading, she found a new passion in competitive bodybuilding. Georgia Palladino brings us the report. Ashley Lockerbie always had a passion for cheerleading and she devoted her life to becoming a D1 college cheerleader. Unfortunately, this dream quickly faded away. My sophomore year, the first competition, I broke my foot. So that's when I stopped. I still kind of stayed with the team. I went to practices and I went to nationals with them while I was on crutches, which was a struggle, but I did it. When I first broke my foot, I was honestly so depressed. I was like so upset. Seeing the team and knowing that I couldn't be a part of it was really hard. Um, so I knew I had to do something to kind of distract myself from all of that. Ashley decided not to let this unfortunate event bring her down. She began going to the gym and despite being in a cast, she began lifting. After spending a majority of her days in the gym, she realized that she had a new calling, competitive bodybuilding. With little knowledge, she entered herself into an OCB fitness competition. And surprisingly, she got second place. When I did my first fitness competition, I found that I loved it so much more and I could devote my time and spend my time more wisely doing something that would help me progress within the real world. Because I coached myself, it was like, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I just kind of threw myself into it. Um, so it was a good learning experience for my first show. Determined to keep pushing herself to new limits, Ashley trained herself for a year before entering into another competition in a higher division. Before I changed into MPC, which was like the real world of bodybuilding, and um, that's when I decided to do fitness, um, and I had to choreograph my own routine. So the way that fitness division works, it's two thirds of the competition are based on your routine, and then one third based on like your body and your posing and the aesthetics of your body. Um, so I coached myself for like the diet and training and all of that for my body. And then um, I choreographed my routine with my little sister. She's actually 13 years old. She's a dancer, competitive dancer and gymnast. She helped me a ton to choreograph my routine. Social media has been one of the biggest forces behind Ashley's success. Instagram made a huge <laughs> impact on me um, because I did start like posting motivational things and stuff like that um, on Instagram. People were like, wow, you're making so much progress. Like, you're inspiring me. Becoming so popular on Instagram with over 12,000 followers, Ashley decided to take the next step in her career. So for several months, she dedicated her time to studying for the certified personal trainer exam. And she ended up passing it on her first try. I want to train people. I want them to learn and feel what I feel and like help other people do the same thing.
I never thought that like weightlifting would become like this big in my life and being in like fitness and like even see like on Instagram they're like oh I saw you on online I saw you on this website on Instagram or like um someone sent me something that I my picture was on like Pinterest and I was like I don't even have a Pinterest like I don't even know what that is like they're like yeah I saw your picture like I don't know I guess I'm like becoming a face in the fitness industry it's crazy to think that I've come so far and that people know me. Not only is Ashley a competitive bodybuilder and a personal trainer, but she's also a full-time graduate student at Sacred Heart University. My undergrad was in exercise science. I did it in three years. I actually applied to Sacred Heart for the 3 plus 3 program for exercise science. And this year is my fourth year of school, but I'm in graduate school for physical therapy. So I have two more years and then I'll have my um, DPT, my doctorate of physical therapy. With everything Ashley's learned in school or taught herself on her own, she hopes to one day open her own fitness facility. My ultimate goal is to open up my own facility with a dual training and physical therapy facility. So um, I know a lot of people say that like physical therapy is their workout. They go to physical therapy like, oh, I get to work out and I want to make a facility where once people can't go to physical therapy anymore, whether they're insurance or whatever, they graduate from physical therapy, they can keep up the training and keep working out and doing different things and progressing. With everything that Ashley has accomplished and hopes to achieve in the future, she has no time for negative comments. I know I've worked so hard to get to where I am and I'm confident with my body and myself that I know, I don't care what other people think anymore. If they think I'm too big or too manly or shouldn't be lifting heavy people are like oh why do you want to get bigger why do you want to get more muscle muscular and I know that it's a sign for me of hard work I've worked so hard to get the body that I have now to get to where I am to gain strength to gain everything and I wouldn't change that for the world. No matter who says what to me, I know that that's what I want and that's all that matters. Thank you for that report, Georgia. What an inspiration. When we come back, see how these senior theater arts students are preparing themselves to leave their passion for theater behind. Welcome back to The Pulse. Last semester, Sacred Heart welcomed a new member to the university family, Father David Buckles. I got a chance to sit down with the new chaplain to learn more about his background and his experience transitioning into the position. Let's take a look. I am the chaplain and director of campus ministry at Sacred Heart University. When I was probably at first fascinated by priesthood, maybe as a person in junior high, we were blessed as a parish to have a priest that seemed very happy. Monsignor Ward was his name, and he just loved being with people. I remember seeing him pray before Mass, and then wondering how a person got to be that person that was a priest. High school, I thought, I wonder if I would ever be one that could do that, because I actually enjoyed church. It wasn't really something that I had to be forced to do. In fact, I only missed Mass one time just to see what it was like. This is kind of a confession, I guess. I found it was just a very empty day. But when I went through college and then ended up going into dental school, which is what was my eventual goal, and it kept surfacing. And every time it surfaced, I thought maybe it was because I was afraid I wouldn't get into dental school, wouldn't do well in dental school, wouldn't have a practice to uh, enter into after dental school. Well, once all of those things were in place and I was still thinking about it, by the process of elimination, I said it must be something you need to try. And in trying it, here I am. The most important experience of my life that has shaped my faith is my family. Father David grew up on a farm in Indiana with 10 brothers and sisters. This taught him many lessons. The experiences of growing up together, disagreeing about things, competing with each other, being upset by each other, hurt by each other, uh, loving each other has been the most important part. It has taught me in a small way of what the church is in a large way. It's a family. I visited Sacred Heart the first weekend of February. It was a wonderful experience. My first student ambassador who led me around the campus was just ecstatic about having been a student here and having told me the story how she got here and she said it was love at first sight. 
that was a neat story because I felt that same way when I stepped foot on the campus. My time at Sacred Heart has been filled with a lot of challenges just because of transition to a new position following a priest, Father Jerry Ryle, who was a wonderful chaplain on campus and very well loved. And to try and not fill those shoes, there's no way to do that. But to follow after someone like, like that is, for one, a blessing because you have the opportunity to have all this wonderful structure already in place. But then to try to live up to and understand the students as he had grown to understand them in those five years he, he was here, it was challenging. We also had some tragic events that happened. Faced with tragedy from the moment he stepped onto campus, dealing with the death of a student who had been hit by a car just before classes began. I saw how wonderful the faculty, the staff, and the students react to support each other when difficulty happens, and that pretty impressive. When given the job description for Sacred Hearts Chaplain meant attending campus events and being involved with the campus community. And I said, oh, that sounds like uh, a dream come true. I, of course, would love to do that. Being a priest is much more than celebrating weekend mass. This past weekend being parents weekend, I was at the uh, tailgate and then, of course, the game. We had a blessing for the student that uh, was killed in the accident early and blessed the tree that was planted and with her sorority sisters and her family. Then went to uh, the day after there was, there were two masses for the parents when they were extremely full. Went from there to the choir uh, performance and then followed that with one of the theater productions and then had an evening mass for the students. When asked about whether he prefers to be called Father David or Father Buckles. It doesn't really have a preference attached to it. I think it, people Calling me what they're comfortable calling me is probably the most important thing. The, the people that God brings into your life, you have something to give them. And you may not know what that is, but remembering all along when things are difficult, when you're confused, feed my sheep. There's something that you have to give and are giving whether you know it or not. I guess the part that is important for me as a priest, and I would think for every priest, is to just know that you're human. That support and understanding of a community that would be there for anyone who's a human being and going through life you know, with difficulties and challenges and fears at times, that's what I want them to know. And fortunately, I found that. He's such a down-to-earth guy. It was great getting to talk to him. Yeah, he had some really big shoes to fill, and it looks like he's doing a really great job. This year, Sacred Heart University's Theater Arts Program welcomed dozens of new participants and announced the creation of a new theater major. Sadly, at the end of the spring semester, the program must also say goodbye to its graduating seniors. Colleen Crowley brings us the story. How did these seniors feel about graduating? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Do I have to answer that? That's hard. John Coletta, Abshir Aiden, and Aaron Dugan sat down with me. As they start preparing for their final shows, they reflect on how they got their start in the theater arts program. Um, well, since day one of being a Sacred Heart, I came to, um, to have an ice cream social at the very beginning of the year. And from the second I walked in, I started making friends with the various people in my year at the ice cream social as well as some of the upperclassmen on eboard. And I don't think I've breathed a moment since then that has not been tap related since I've been here and it's just been an absolute wild ride from day one till today four years later. Well I always knew in college I wanted to be involved with theater because it's always been one of my passions so um, I came on a tour and I had a meeting with Jerry and he sat down told me what the theater program was all about um, I auditioned for him and immediately knew right off the bat, I'm like, yep, nope, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do with college. This is how I want to spend my free time. So ever since then, it's just, ever since I was a freshman, I've always been involved, so. Freshman year, spring semester, and I took a nap in one of the green rooms. And then I woke up and I joined the TAP program. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So how have these three students impacted others? I mean, personally, I've really connected with John Coletta and Aaron Dugan, and um, she she says to me every day how much she's gonna miss you and how wonderful of experience this has been for her, and how she wouldn't have had it any other way. And these four years have just been wonderful for her, and she's learned so much and accomplished so much, and I don't develop new goals and accomplished old ones. 
and it's just a beautiful thing to watch. Um, even just in the last in, in the last year of it, and um, I aspire to be like them, like Aaron, like John. My experience here would have like it wouldn't have been the same without everyone that I've met in the program. Because honestly, like these people are like my family, and it's like it's hard to imagine that. I'm going to be leaving them so soon, and so I owe them the world. <laughs> so, yeah. I wouldn't be the person that I am today if it wasn't for this program. Like, I'm glad that I did stumble into this, this theater and take a nap. I, I, I just didn't think I was going to get that attached to, any, to anything or anybody. And I don't know. It just... It really does suck that I, now that I'm thinking about them, I'm going to be going away. I think by being in the theater arts program here, I've learned much more than just theater. Um, it's obviously helped me expand on acting, um, sound, lighting, tech of all kinds, producing. Um, but it's also taught me humility, love, Tenderness, friendship. I can do better than that. Hold on. Like leaving Sacred Heart, it, like I don't really care about that, but the program itself, I don't know. It really did change my life. And with that, the graduating seniors prepare to face many more life-changing moments. Until then, I'm Colleen Crowley for The Pulse. Back to you in the studio. Thank you for that report, Colleen. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm Emily Archacki. And I'm Adriana Walsh. This show is produced by the TV News Magazine class at Sacred Heart University. On behalf of all of us, thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is The Pulse.